Okay. Hello, everyone. My name is Brittany Kessler, and I am the National President of the American Medical Student Association. I'm very excited to be able to be with you today for College Week Live, and I hope you enjoy the talk that I give. Um, like I said, I am the president of the American Medical Student Association, and I am a doctor. I just graduated uh, medical school in May, and uh, so I have a wealth of experience on what it's like to be a medical student and what it's like to be a pre-medical student. So I'm very excited today to be able to kind of go through the process of uh, getting into medical school, what it's like to be a pre-medical student, and what it's like to be a medical student. I can tell you now, it's not an easy path to become a doctor, but it's very rewarding, and I wouldn't change a thing about my path and about my journey so far. So I welcome any questions throughout the presentation. Uh, I will be taking the time to try to answer them uh, for you, and uh, please feel free to ask questions if you have them. Um, I'm Again, I'm very excited to be here. So with that, some of the things that I'll be talking about during the presentation. Uh, what you need in high school, what you need in college in terms of classes, and what is the MCAT, and, and what do you need for it. And I'll be talking about some alternative paths to get into medical school as well. So let's just move right along. So medical school. Uh, you can see there's a lot of different things that you need to be able to, uh, to get into medical school. And I know when I decided to become a doctor myself, I was very stressed out because I really didn't know what I needed or what it, what, it, what it would take to be in medical school. And I actually didn't decide to become a doctor until I already got into college. So you're really a step ahead of the game um, right now. If you're thinking, uh, if you're in high school and you're thinking about becoming a doctor, you're way a step ahead of me, um, definitely more so than I was when I started out. Um, so again, you start off in high school uh, and you kind of, we'll talk about what you need. Uh, in, in undergrad and um, kind of go from there. Uh, let's see. So in this path, um, we'll start off with high school. Uh, you, you really need to, in high school, I know, although I didn't know that I wanted to be a doctor while I was in high school, I always loved science. That's where it really started off for me is um, Knowing that I love science, knowing that I wanted to do something within science, I liked going to my high school science classes, but I didn't really know what that was. So either way, um, I knew for a career in science that you really needed good grades uh, in school. So in high school, I really tried to do well in, you know, my biology classes or, you know, your, your AP anatomy classes, uh, math. Now, I will be honest, math hasn't always been my strong suit. Um, I did struggle with that a bit in high school. Um, but it's all about how much you try and your overall GPA. So, you know, you don't need to be an A student in high school um, to, to worry about what kind of undergraduate admissions you're going to get. That being said, do get good grades, but um, getting good grades in high school isn't going to be the be-all, end-all of getting into medical school. So, um, so if you're already freaking out, you know, calm down a little bit. Uh, it, it'll be okay. Um, so again, when I was in high school, I did focus on that science. And, and when you get into uh, your undergraduate, when you get into college, uh, that's really where you start shaping your future. Uh, so when you uh, are getting into college, you really need to, um, you know, set up, like I said before, set yourself up for success. Um, make sure that you have a good a, uh, SAT or ACT score. Uh, definitely study for that. And if you don't feel up to par, you know, make sure that you are getting tutors or you're going to a program that will help you do well on your SAT score. Again, make sure you have a good GPA uh, when you are applying to college. Uh, for your classes, again, I actually personally didn't take any AP classes. Uh, surprise, surprise, and yet I'm still a doctor. So, you know, you, you will be okay. Um, doing this and not taking AP classes. That being said, the field continually uh, gets to be more competitive as you go on. So if you do have the opportunity to take AP classes, try it and see what it's like. And, and if you can, go ahead and do it. Um, you know, again, make sure that you have a good GPA and, um, and uh, do the best that you can through that. Now, um, the SAT and the ACT uh, have changed since I've taken them. So off the top of my head, I do not know um, what is a good ACT or SAT score to have, uh, to be honest. It's been about eight years since I've taken it, and it's changed since, since then. 
uh, it all in terms of your SAT, ACT, and getting into college, it depends on the college that you're trying to go to. Um, some uh, schools will look at the entire applicant. So say if you have just an a, uh, OK, SAT, ACT, how are you doing in your GPA? If you have a very high GPA and a kind of low SAT, they'll say, OK, what happened on that day of the test? Did they, did they have a panic attack before they walk in? Did, you know, what were some external factors in that? So you know, really, the, your GPA is a, is a status of how you've done long term. You know, SAT, ACT, that's a one time, how have you done um, in that moment? So really, it's the whole picture, uh, what the colleges are looking for. And again, you know, look, look and see what co different colleges you're looking at. And look to see, it should say on their websites what uh, SAT and AC, ACT score they're looking for in their admissions page. Uh, definitely do extracurricular activities uh, when you're in high school and when you're in college as well. This is something that I'll be uh, really focusing on because personally it's it really helped me doing these extracurricular activities uh, when I was going through this process. Uh, like I said, quality over quantity. If you're you know, in the science club for six months and you're the secretary and that's all you've done throughout all of high school, it's not going to be as meaningful if you stuck with that position throughout all of high school or you volunteer. I know when I was in high school, I volunteered at a hospital uh, for long term, not very short term. It shows the college that you are committed to this path and it's not something that's just a random thought in your head like, hey, I decided I wanted to be pre-med. This seems like fun. Um, let's see. So I have a question here um, from Angelique. Uh, she wants to know, is there any advice for students finishing their undergrad and then heading off to med school from uh, a county college? Uh, so I'll get into the college in a little bit, and I'll give you um, some tips. There are some def uh, there's uh, some definitely um, some tips there. And as well, I have a question from Raven. So what is the most appropriate major for pursuing a career in pediatrics? That's actually what I'm going into. So I'll get into uh, that a little bit as well. So just sit tight. I promise I'll get to it. <laughs> OK. Um, so again, pursue your interests when you're in high school. Uh, Medical schools and colleges like to see what are you interested in. It doesn't have to be science related. Hey, if you want to, you know, do uh, sports and you really like sports, then go for it. They just they realize that we are actual people that have actual uh, extracurricular needs and wants. And, you know, we're not supposed to be robots trying to fit into the mold. I promise you, sometimes this whole process makes it seem like you need to be a robot and you need to do X, Y, and Z um, to become a doctor, but that's definitely not the case. Okay, so selecting the, the right uh, undergraduate uh, program for you. Uh, every program is going to be different for every person, and that is going to be the same for your whole path and your whole journey. Not every medical school is right for you. And for me, what I'm realizing right now is not every residency is right for me, and that's very, very long term. But, you know, again, each program will have something that really calls you there, and that's the program that you should go to, one that you feel comfortable in. Um, definitely make sure that the school that you go to does have uh, either a pre-medical track or pre-medical uh, advising. Uh, pre-medical advising is definitely important if you want to go into med school. You need to make sure that there is someone there for you who knows the path and who knows the coursework and knows what you need to succeed um, in college in order to get into medical school. You need to see, you know, what are their scientific classes like? How many people pass their science classes? I know when I first started college, I was very, very taken aback at um, how many people failed, for example, the general chemistry course. I was very surprised um, by some of these courses and uh, the rigor that was involved in them. So they should be very upfront with you about um, the, the rigor of the coursework. Um, definitely make sure that you, the school has, oper if you like research, you have opportunities within the science lab to do research. Make sure there are adequate mentors there for you, and we'll get into that a little bit more. Uh, see if there's any way, um, if they do have a pre-medical program, to get clinical exposure. I know with my program, um, we had a hospital right across the street, so I was able um, to shadow and to, you know, see my first surgery as a pre-medical student. It was a very interesting experience, let me tell you. But you need to be able to see 
does that college have those opportunities for you? They're very, very important. Um, I can tell you on you know my personal statement when I was when I was applying to medical school, the fact that I did have that clinical exposure and I was able to see a surgery, uh, that's a big deal to uh, medical school admissions because they see that you've actually been in the hospital, you actually get a glimpse of what it's like, and that you know kind of what you're getting yourself into. So being able to have that clinical exposure is very important. Cost definitely a factor. You know, I know, again, I'm a first-generation college student, uh, so we didn't have a lot of money to be able to um, grow at a college. So, you know, it's okay if you don't go to the ivory tower schools. You will still get into medical school if you play your cards right. You just have to know how to play the cards. So, you know, try, try to get scholarships, try to do what you can, but again, you know, if you have to start out at a community college, that's okay. Um, know if any of the colleges have any affiliations with medical schools because uh, if they do, that might be a pipeline to go straight from that college to medical school. Some years even have six-year programs where, you know, you do your first two years of college and then you do four years of medical school. So it's all about the research that you do on these colleges to really see what you want and what is right for you. Um, and then definitely check their pre-med acceptance rate. Now. Um, Remember, only about 50% of pre-meds get accepted into medical school. So you really want to see where they are, but also be wary. Um, if schools have a very, very high pre-medical um, acceptance rate, they might make their, their, rigor, their courses so rigorous that students can't pass their courses. And so that's why only those students remain pre-med. So a lot of different factors uh, go into what, what it takes and what uh, factors play into how you're going to pick your program. So um, don't be afraid to ask questions of these colleges. You're really trying to do uh, what's best for yourself here. Okay, so uh, you're in college, so what do you do? What's the path that you take? Um, I can tell you that when I first started and I decided to become a pre-medical student, I was so confused on what I should do, how I should do it. Uh, I never had anyone in my family want to be a doctor before. so. Basically, I was starting from scratch. I was really starting from the ground up. Um, so what I did is I talked to a pre-medical advisor to find out the courses that I needed to take. And I actually, as a pre-medical student, I joined the American Medical Student Association because that was a group of pre-medical students who really knew what they were doing and also helped guide me in the right direction. So I had a little, I had multiple sources of support here. So you have to first identify a major. What are you doing? You do not have to take a pre-medical track. It's not necessary. Uh, personally, I started as a biology major because I like science. I've always liked science. You know, I didn't want to do something like neoclassical art when that's not something that I love. However, if you are interested in that and that's something that you do love, do it. College is the time to really explore your interests and to really see what drives you and what motivates you. Uh, if you still want to be a doctor and you want to do um, another major, that's okay. I have a friend who, who majored in uh, Russian history and literature and is a psychiatrist now at Vanderbilt. So you, you definitely have...
Okay, I think we're back on. Okay, I'm gonna hand. Okay, so sorry about that. Um, the connection dropped this technology. Anyways, uh, we were talking about what majors uh, you have to take and what you're interested in. Um, so again, like I was saying, you don't have to be a, a straight up pre-med or biology major to get into medical school. That being said, there are some courses that you do need to take if you want to be in medical school, if you do want to get in. Uh, you do have to take at least two semesters of general biology, uh, at least two semesters of general chemistry with lab. Um, unfortunately, you do have to take classes of organic chemistry. I will say that for at least uh, myself, organic chemistry was the toughest class that I had to take, um, but you do have to take it. Uh, you have to take physics, and again, the math varies per school. I, I personally went up to um, calculus. Uh, that's what some of the schools uh, wanted, so that's what I did. And um, at the core, that is what you need to become a doctor. If you want to do a biology major or a science-based major, that's great. Uh, but if you don't want to, that's okay. Um, so just think about what you're good at. You know, are you good at these sciences? Then maybe the science uh, major is right for you, and maybe that's what you would like to do. Let's move on. So some different uh, important aspects of when you are in college um, and you do want to become a doctor, what else should you be doing? Um, I'll stop and I'll take that question um, about uh, if you are in a community college, is that going to count against you? Uh, no. Uh, however, Schools do like it when you take um, uh, these science courses from a university. You can do those basic science courses that I just mentioned from a community college, um, but they could uh, not be looked at in the same light or they might not count for credit. So when you are talking to these schools, make sure that the courses that you are taking in a community college actually count towards uh, that credit in the eyes of the medical school. Um, so you still can be successful, uh, but it just depends on the requirements that that medical school wants. Um, you do have to take all of the sciences that I mentioned previously. Uh, no holds barred, you have to take the biology, you have to take the general chemistry, organic chemistry, physics, and math, um, because you will be getting that again in medical school. I promise you, you will. Um, some of the basic medical school courses are biochemistry, cardiophysiology, uh, pathology, and um, these college courses really give you the foundation to succeed in medical school. So it only builds on each other. So uh, unfortunately, uh, that's kind of the gambit that you have to go through. Um, but again, it will give you the building blocks to succeed in medical school. So it's definitely worth it. So again, some important supplements for undergrad. Make sure that you have a mentor, someone that you can talk frankly with, and someone that supports you in your journey to medical school. Uh, someone that you feel comfortable asking questions to, because as you all know, you have a lot of questions on what does it take to get into medical school. Are they going to be straight and honest with you on your strengths and weaknesses? Um, and they should be able to be receptive to you wanting them to be your mentors. You don't want to try to have someone who's a mentor who doesn't ever want to take the time out to talk to you. Um, so they should they should be willing to to want to talk to you. Um, you know, be serious when you do go to your mentors. Um, if you have questions for them, make sure you write your questions down um, and sit and take notes when you're talking to them so that they know that you really want to go through this journey. Um, and, you know, again, if they tell you that you need work, don't, you know, don't get defensive or shut down. Really ask them, what do you mean by that? What can I really do to improve? Um, again, you need to make sure, they need, you need to prove to them that you're serious um, and that you actually really want to get into medical school. And um, one mentor is never enough. I actually i am lucky to have multiple mem uh, mentors and different kinds of specialties, and I've had mentors all along the way. Um, and each person really brings a different expertise and a different style um, into what you're looking for, um, what you should be looking for as a pre-medical student. I did have a question on what is the difference between a community college and a university. A community college is usually a, uh, a county college that uh, offers a two-year degree, an associate's degree. A university is uh, a place that offers a four-year degree uh, in biology or a different major. 
again, typically the medical schools are looking for you to go to uh, a university, um, a state school, uh, it doesn't matter. As long as they have a four-year program, um, it's, it's a little highly, it's more highly looked at than um, some of the community colleges. Um, but that being said, you will still have the opportunity to succeed in these community colleges. Just make sure that your credits count. Um, so we'll go ahead and move on, but I can't reiterate enough how important it is to really make sure that you do have a, at least one mentor through this process uh, and to make sure that they have your back. Um, some additional supplements to an undergraduate education. Uh, make sure uh, you either, you know, have, if you have a job or you have volunteer work, uh, try to get into that hospital. Um, I can tell you that I did have uh, two jobs while I was in college simultaneously while trying to do coursework, so that was a little bit crazy, um, but that's what I had to do at the time. Um, so medical schools don't look down on that. I remember being uh, in my medical, doing my medical school interviews, and they were very impressed um, at the fact that, you know, some of us do have to hold jobs and try to do these coursework at the same time, and that's okay. You know, sometimes you have to do what you have to do. Medical school uh, applications are not cheap, so if you have to work to pay for those applications, it's okay. Uh, really try in some way, shape, or form, if you are a pre-medical student, to do some volunteer work in a hospital. Uh, they, the medical schools really need to see that you actually take this seriously and you know what the hospital is going to be like. You know, I handed out water and whatever else the patient needs, but you really get to see what the hospital is like. Uh, if you have the opportunity to do summer research or summer school, then that's great. It just shows them that you're very academically minded and that you really want to, to take it a step further. Um, I can tell you, um, what I did uh, while I was in uh, pre-med to really give my application a boost. And again, it was joining the American Medical Student Association. Uh, like I said before, I had started school and I was very nervous because I had no idea what I was doing. Um, so I joined this organization um, and it really kind of gave me an insight about what I needed uh, to succeed in uh, medical school. So, you know, I'm giving you this presentation now and hopefully it's helpful, but it's also helpful to have a group of students around you that really do know what they're doing and how, who, who might be further along with you to help. Um, I ended up taking leadership positions uh, with, in my undergraduate coursework. I was um, my organization's chapter uh, vice president and I was able to organize uh, health fairs at our pre-medical uh, institution and I, I had lots of opportunities to do some clinical coursework. And I know that those types of extra undergraduate experiences uh, really helped because it shows that you can be responsible. It shows that you know how to be a leader and it shows that you, you have the ability to multitask because let me tell you, uh, once you do get into medical school, you will have to multitask a lot. Um, so someone had a question on how I managed um, to do um, jobs while staying um, in my undergraduate coursework. Um, I can tell you it wasn't easy. I didn't have much of a life, to be quite honest, uh, but I did, you know, I needed the money to, to pay for some of these applications, so I did have to take a job. Uh, fortunately or unfortunately for me. Um, so what I would try to do is I would try to work more when I had um, classes that I found weren't as rigorous. So for me, biology came very easy while physics and math did not. So I would work more hours uh, while I um, took the easier in my mind uh, classes, but then if I'm taking classes, I tried to save up my money and scale back um, on the hours that I worked while I was doing these rigorous courses because um, you know your grades count. You can't really excuse failing grades uh, if you have a job. You should you know try to be able to manage. Um, so again, not easy, but it is manageable. Um, again, some other organizations you can join, obviously AMSA is what I'm a part of, I'm the national president, so of course I'm going to tell you about that. Uh, you can join the Alpha Epsilon Delta Pre-Health Society, and of course you can join in athletics or service events or whatever else you would like. Okay, so what is this MCAT that you have to prepare for? Um, and you know what does it what does it count towards? So if you are in college and you know you want to be a pre med and you are set, you know you want to be a doctor, 
you have to start thinking about the medical college admissions test. Um, it's a standardized multiple test examination and uh, it is required by I'd say 99% of these US medical uh, schools. Uh, currently, um, before it changes, uh, the sections are physical sciences, biological sciences, verbal reasoning, uh, and right now they have a, a writing section, but I believe they're taking that away. Um, you have to prepare for this exam. It's not easy, especially if you're not a good test taker. Um, so that's why it's so important to really research this exam and know what you're getting, uh, what you're, you, what you're getting yourself into. Um, so I know that I took a preparatory course to really help me out with this, to really learn what I'm getting myself into. Uh, surprisingly, what medical schools look at when you're taking this test is your verbal reasoning section. Uh, it is becoming more and more important as a doctor to be able to communicate with your patients effectively. You can be the most brilliant person in the world and know science, but if you don't know how to talk to patients, you're not a good doctor. So medical schools really look at this verbal reasoning on how do you think about communication? How do you really process it uh, and, and, and can emphasize on it? Now, of course, that being said, physical sciences and biological sciences are very, it's your core. So you need to do well on that um, in addition. So I have a question from Angelique on um, if I've ever done poorly in a course um, and how do you explain to a medical school why you've done um, poorly? So um, let's see, I think on my first organic chemistry course, um, I got a C in it, which medical schools uh, do not like. Um, and, you know, it just depends on your circumstances. I remember speaking to the medical school like saying, you know, these science classes are new for me. This was tough. But look, I took this course again, and I got a B plus. So you really have to be able to, to, to turn the negative into a positive and show that you're really trying. And if you put the effort in, you're really working. Now, that being said, you know, I did poorly in that one course. But in other courses, I did very, very well. So, you know, you're allowed to have topics that you don't really do well in. That's, o that's okay. But your overall picture of a student really needs to um, show that you can shine. So um, I have another question on um, why is the MCAT changing? And so um, the MCAT is changing, again, because uh, thinking about how you want to be a physician is changing in terms of the eyes of um, these medical schools. Medical schools now are emphasizing more on uh, the humanities aspect of being a physician. Are you, can you be kind? Can you be caring? What is your personality like? Again, are, are you able to communicate with your patients? Um, it's very important to be able to, you know, talk to your patients and to, to be able to accurately describe their disease. Um, so again, so basically why the MCAT is changing is um, they need to update um, their science sections because, again, science is always changing. You need to make sure um, that it's updated. And, um, again, they want to, to, to be able to see if you can discuss sociocultural norms and behavioral determinant, determinants of health because these are all things um, that goes into what it means to be a physician. Um, so th those are some of the basic reasons on um, why the MCAT is changing. Uh, and I'm going to get into a little bit of that in a little more detail in a while. Okay. So uh, some additional changes to the M MCAT. So the writing sample was removed. I remember I did have to take the writing sample myself. So uh, you're lucky that it, it is removed. Um, again, the natural science section is updated. And uh, psychological, behavioral, and biological foundation um, of behavior section is added. Um, just to see how you can uh, work with this critical analysis and critical reasoning in terms of behavior. Um, you can also, if you'd like some uh, additional information on what changes are happening with the MCAT, you can go on to uh, aamc.org, and um, that's the American Association of Medical Colleges, and um, they go into great detail about what the MCAT is, how it's changing, and how you should prepare. Okay, so we're, we're going down our path. We're, we've gotten through our pre-medical pre coursework. We're thinking about um, our MCAT, and now we're thinking about applying. You know, what do you really do? What do you focus on? Um, so in 
terms of the timeline for medical school and applying, I know this is a little bit further out for you guys, um, but I do want to make sure um, that, you know, moving forward, you do have a broad overview of what you're getting yourself into. So the first two years are really where you hunker down um, and you do your studies and you don't necessarily need to think medical school, medical school right away. Uh, just focus on doing well in your courses these first two years. Um, once you start getting into your junior year is when you start thinking MCAT, this is what you need to take, you know, take a practice test, see how you do. And uh, you won't actually um, start, you won't actually take your MCAT um, until the, the spring of your junior year or even the summer, depending on how you did and if you need to retake it. Um, this, the, um, the fall of your senior year is when you're actually going to apply to medical school. Um, I remember this was a very stressful process. You know, you're filling out one application, um, and then if medical schools like you, they'll send you a secondary application that you have to fill out, and then you have to go on interviews, and you might have to fly around, um, do that, which again is not cheap. So that's why it's good to save up your money. Um, and uh, hopefully by that, that spring of your senior year, you will know uh, if you did get into medical school um, and what the process is going to be like. Uh, when you are interviewing for anything, if you have to interview for college, if you're interviewing for medical school, uh, when I'm interviewing for residency in the next couple of weeks, you really need to know yourself and know your, what your strengths uh, and weaknesses are. You have to be able to articulate why are you going into medicine? What drives you? What draws you? Okay, is it your parents? You don't want to say, okay, my parents are making me go. They're not going to want to accept you, uh, most likely, if that's the case. You have to show that you have a real passion for medicine and that you're excited about starting and that you really think you're up to the task. Uh, you'll get thrown all different kinds of questions. So it's very good um, for any interview in life, if you're going to take anything out of this presentation, uh, make sure that again, you know yourself, have people ask you uh, questions on a practice round because it's very scary being able to talk in, you know, in person with someone sometimes when you are being interviewed and it's so high stakes and you want to get in so badly. So make sure you practice, practice, practice um, for some of these, um, these medical school interviews because again, it can be stressful. So you have to be able to turn your, positive, your negatives into positives and really show what makes you special. Uh, it is possible to wait uh, until after your undergraduate degree is complete to take your MCAT. Um, you do want to try to take all of those core courses that I had mentioned before you take the MCAT. Uh, that being said, um, you don't want to wait too long because that information that you have learned in those core courses um, is still fresh in your head while you, when you're doing it in your undergrad. So if you wait, that, that information not, might not be as fresh, but you have to do whatever works for you. Again, it's not one strict timeline um, for pre-med pre and medical school. Um, you have to do what you feel most comfortable with. And if that means you know, waiting until after you're done with your undergraduate education to take your MCAT or to do this application process, then that's fine. I know I actually had to take a gap year between um, undergrad and medical school uh, because my graduation um, I graduated in the summer and medical school would have already started, so it didn't work out perfectly, and that's okay. Um, you just have to show that you're doing something during that year and that you're still passionate about medical school. Okay, so some alternate paths to medical school. Um, and, and these really show that, um, so say, you know, you applied to medical school and uh, you, didn't, you didn't get in right away. Um, there are some non-traditional paths that you could take. You could try the Peace Corps. You could try Teach for America or America Corps. Um, a lot of students, you know, if they um, try to apply to medical school the first time around in their undergraduate and, uh, you know, they come back with, you know, your grades aren't good enough. We'd like to see a stronger um, applicant in terms of GPA. Well, you can always go to graduate school. You can get your master's in public health. You can get your master's in biological sciences. Um, there's always a graduate um, education that you can do to really show them that you do have what it takes to succeed. Um, again, you can do employment. This does not count as a bad thing in the eyes of medical schools. Um, it shows that you show up on time, that you're committed, that you know how to work, that you know how to deal with people. I'm telling you, being a waitress 
really shows you what it means to have to deal with people. And uh, I've been there and, you know, they, they liked that. Um, in addition, um, if you're able to, if you have really great grades um, and you have the opportunity to do a combined Bachelor of Science and MD program or combined DO program, then go for it if that's something you want. You don't have to take um, the, the exact same cookie credit route um, to get into medical school. Okay. So, again, just go through medical school or, excuse me, your undergraduate um, the best way possible. If you have to delay taking some of your science courses or if you uh, want to take them all right away, it's all dependent on you and what your advisor says the best is for you. I'm not trying to advocate for taking specific classes at a certain time. It just depends on what college you get into and how, these, uh, and how they set it out for you. Okay, so what I wish I would have known um, I guess in multiple different aspects. What I wish I would have known in undergraduate um, is that, you know, uh, medical school isn't easy. Uh, it is a very long commitment uh, that you're signing yourself up to. Um, this path does change you, uh, changes who you are, it changes what you care about. Um, you, you definitely, you know, everyone grows uh, in the course of their lives, but medical school really makes you grow up quickly. You have to deal with life and death situations, and uh, you have to be able to, to handle that, um, you know, at a relatively young age, um, if you're applying to medical school at 24, like most people do. Um, so I wish I would have known um, how tough it would be. That being said, you can get through it. It's possible. But man, it is a tough road doing medical school. Um, and you just have to realize that. And you also have to realize that uh, medical school is expensive. I'm going to be in a lot of debt for a long time. Uh, granted, you, you make a good, decent salary as a doctor, but that still comes with a debt that you have to be willing to put yourself into. Um, I, I wish I would have known that it's okay to ask for more mentors. I, I you know, I was kind of shy um, in undergraduate, and I didn't really want to reach out, so I think I would have uh, been a little less shy about who I asked for help, and, and don't worry about asking help for help. It's okay. Um, what, I, what I wish I would have known in medical school is that it will be okay. Medical students are very stressed out all of the time. I tell my previous self that you'll be okay. It's going to be fine. You have a support system in place um, to really support you and to make sure you get through it. Um, I, you know, I definitely uh, look for shadowing experiences uh, when you're in college. I would try to do more of that. Um, so shadowing experiences means um, asking a doctor to be able to follow them in the hospital while they see patients. Um, so what you typically have to do to be able to shadow a physician is go through the volunteer services uh, office at a hospital to be able to um, see patients because you typically have to go through some training courses um, to be able to go into a hospital. I think um, as an undergrad, it's so important to get that shadowing experience. I can't uh, emphasize it enough. Okay, so let's see. So moving on, um, and all of these pictures are actually from uh, my medical school experience. So these are some people from my class. We were at a rural health fair, I think, in my second year of medical school, and we had a lot of fun seeing patients. Um, so, you know, again, um, I'm I'm up for questions if anyone has any. Um, again, this is a being a pre med and medical school, becoming a doctor. It's a crazy journey. Uh, it was tough. I, I've gone through some of the most emotional roller coasters I've ever had in my life. Um, it really makes you question who you are, who you want to be. But that being said, I can't imagine doing anything else with my life. Um, if, you know, if you want to do that, you know, if you know you want to be a doctor and this is what you want to do, don't let anyone tell you um, that you can't be a doctor and that you can't succeed. Uh, you do have to work hard. You do have to put in the hours. Um, but if you do, it's worth it. Um, I've met some of my best friends in medical school, and it's so gratifying to be able 
um, to go to patients and to know that what you're doing and what you're saying is actually helping someone. It's a privilege to be able to go into a surgery room and to be able to operate on a patient and know that in a couple hours from now, they'll be waking up from anesthesia and we'll have fixed their problem. It's a privilege to be able to deliver a baby and bring a baby into the world. Um, so this is an amazing career path but there's a lot that goes into it. And um, you just have to really do your research and make sure you prepare yourself um, before you get into um, medical school to make sure that it's right for you because you don't want to go through four years and then another three years of residency after medical school to really realize that being a doctor isn't what you want to do. Um, if, can I give a place that has a combined BS and MD program? Uh, this comes from Joshua. So I actually went to an osteopathic school, uh, Nova Southeastern University in South Florida. And uh, my school, so I'm a DO, doctor of osteopathy, which is basically the same thing um, as an MD, ex with the exception of 200 hours of musculoskeletal training. Um, and so that is a college that has a combined program. Um, other ones off the top of my head, I, I could tell you them, but I think I'd be guessing. Um, so I don't want to give you false information. So I would suggest um, that you, if you just Google uh, BSMD programs, um, I guarantee you a bunch will come up. I think Tufts had one. Don't remember off the top of my head. Don't want to give you false information. Um, that uh, BSMD is a very rigorous um, coursework. You're trying to cram eight years of uh, knowledge into six. So if you want to do BSMD, that's great. Um, just be prepared to work very, very hard for it. Um, someone, uh, so I know that my video froze um, from minutes 13 to 16 and someone missed uh, my explanation on transferring from community college to an undergraduate um, college. Um, so again, with um, doing that, just make sure um, that you have a good GPA to to transfer to a four-year course and to try to take all of those science courses at the four-year institution. Um, so let's see what other questions we have. Um, so someone had a question on taking the MCAT before you finish all of your science classes. It's actually possible um, to all of those courses before spring of your junior year. Um, it's helpful if you kind of sit down um, and physically write them out to see what when you have to take what uh, class. So typically you're taking at the same time your intro to biology, your gen chem, uh, your intro to physics, that's all at the same time. So you're not going to take those classes, you know, take biology this semester and then I'll take physics next semester and then you'll do something after that. A lot of the times you're taking all of these courses at the same time. Um, it's very rigorous. A lot of the times, you know, medical students, I think I took like even like 21 credits at one time. You know, you do all kinds of crazy things uh, as a pre-med to, to be able to try to take these courses in the right amount of time. Uh, that being said, if, you know, if you're taking your MCAT um, after your spring of your junior year, that's okay. If you have to take a, a gap year, um, that's okay. Don't worry about it. Now, some people, um, questions about specific specialties, so anesthesiology, pediatrics, surgery, all of this you have to go through uh, pre-med and you have to go through med school. Um, you get your additional training after you're already a doctor. So for example, um, I'm going to be a pediatrician. So right now I'm applying to residency programs that specialize in pediatrics. So I'm already a doctor, but I'm doing additional training to get that uh, certificate to get licensed in pediatrics. So if you want to be um, an anesthesiologist, uh, you don't need to concentrate on anything specific in medical school. Everyone, surgeon, pediatrician, everyone goes through the exact same path in medical school. Um, what you do do in medical school, for example, if you did want to be an anesthesiologist, and I know I wanted to be a pediatrician, um, in your fourth year, your third and fourth years of medical school are your clinical years where you're in the hospital and you're seeing patients um, and you're doing all of that. So you can actually take electives. So I, you know, you would take an elective, an extra elective in anesthesiology or surgery. And I know I took as many electives as I could in pediatrics to really get that exposure. So when you are applying to residency programs like I am now, um, you can, you know, you can tell them, hey, you know, I, I, they've seen, okay, I've taken this elective, 
I've taken that elective and I did great in that course and I really had the aptitude to become this specialty. Um, and uh, then you're good to go. So um, I've had a question from Amanda. How many years have I um, been in school and how, many, how long do I plan to be in school? So, so far I've been in school eight years. I did four years of pre-medical uh, pre studies and then you have another uh, four years of medical school. My situation is a little unique. Typically, people in my position would already be starting their residency training for that subspecialty in pediatrics. However, I'm actually taking a year off to run the American Medical Student Association, um, which uh, is completely atypical of the journey. Um, I actually work full time here. I'm actually right here right now at the ANSA headquarters um, and I work with medical students and pre-medical students all the time. So this is my full time job for a year um, before I start. After that, I do expect to be in the hospital training, technically in school, if you will, um, for at least another three years. Residencies after you're a doctor are actually at least three years. Uh, some residencies are five years, some residencies are seven years. So uh, if you are going to be a doctor, just realize that uh, you will always be learning, you will always be in some type of training. Um, and that's, and even once you're a doctor, you have to get recertified in your specialty every 10 years. Um, once you're a doctor, once you're in your residency training though, you do get paid. So it's like a job. So it's not like you're paying tuition anymore. They're actually paying you um, to work at the hospital and to get that specialty training. Um, so it's a very, very long journey and you, and you have to be willing to uh, learn all the time. Okay, is the MCAT like the SAT and can I retake it if I don't do uh, well the first time around? Um, and MCAT is like the SAT in that it is a standardized exam where um, you're, you know, you're either you're on the computer and you're doing multiple choice exams. So in that way, it's related. The SAT in high school is a broad generalized exam on your knowledge. The MCAT um, focuses specifically on, you know, the biologies, the physics, the math. So it's much, much more science oriented um, than the SAT is. And of course, you can retake it if you don't do well. Um, medical schools will actually want you to retake it if you don't do well specifically on the MCAT. Um, they want to see that you can pass all of these rigorous medical school courses and that you can pass your licensing exams when you become a doctor. That's another thing about pre-med and medical school. You're going to be taking tests for a long time, um, so get used to them. I can tell you that I'm not a fan of tests, but you know, you kind of just have to grin and bear it at times and, and realize that this is what you have to do um, to, to get that major. So does one typically take classes in residency? Now, technically, after medical school, you're done with school. You're done, it's over, school is over. So residency is not a school. Residency is you're a doctor, you're getting paid, you're writing prescriptions. Um, but residency is where you learn to do um, a subspecialty. So I'm just gonna go with pediatrics since that's what I'm going into. Um, you will get courses in residency. They wanna make sure that you're okay with your advanced life support, that you're okay with your basic life support. Um, they will give you, you know, we'll do rounds specifically on radiology, looking at x-rays and CT scans um, to make sure that you know what you're looking at when you're talking to patients. Um, so it's, it's not like a classroom. You're not actually doing a school. What you're, what, where you're learning is actually in the hospital and with your fellow residents. And it's a completely different style of teaching than it is in college. Um, you know, it's, groups of you as doctors and as medical students actually going through and seeing patients and talking about them and learning that way. Um, a lot of the times for residents, they'll have lunch lectures and it'll be on a different type of talk, but typically on a, on a certain disease. So uh, the way that you learn as a college student or a medical student is completely different from the way that you're going to be learning as a resident. So um, hopefully I answered that question adequately. Of what score do you um, do you need on your MCAT to get into medical school? So there's not a specific cutoff score that says, uh, yes, he's getting into medical school. No, they're not getting into medical school. Um, typically, um, from what I've seen, it's more competitive to get into medical school um, now, and um, your score does need to be a little bit higher. I believe the average is about a, at least a 30 on your MCAT. Um, 
that being said, you can have a lower score. And as long as you have a really good GPA and you have really good um, extracurriculars or you have a job or you have something that shows um, that you really know how to shine uh, and succeed in medical school. So um, again, no one cutoff number, but that being said, um, you know, try to get at least 29, 30 above a 30 uh, and you're doing okay. Okay, so um, someone uh, wants to be a pediatric anesthesiologist. Now that's pretty specific now. Um, do, do you recommend that I take pediatric electives too? Um, so if you want to go into pediatric, pediatric anesthesiology, and I'm sorry for the others, I know that's a really specific question. Uh, you start out with anesthesiology, but you should be able to work with kids. Uh, kids are constantly, they're cute, but at the same time, they kick you, they're screaming all the time. You have to be able to know how to dodge those kicks and how to deal with them um, acting up. So I would recommend, um, if you are thinking about a specialty now, try to get exposure that specialty right now because it really shows what you want to do. Um, for those of you that really think you have um, something set in stone, um, be prepared to change your mind in medical school. Um, I didn't think that I would like surgery in any way, shape, or form when I started medical school, um, but once I started, I found that I really, really loved it, um, and I liked having, you know, I liked working with my hands, and I liked being in the operating room. Um, and then you learn that there are things that you just don't like. like. I don't, you know, I don't like obstetrics and gynecology that much. I thought I'd like it more, but I didn't. Um, so really, I would suggest for those of you that think you have something specific in mind now, make sure you could still do that path, but really keep an open mind um, for what you want to do when you start medical school, because those perceptions could completely change and really allow yourself to have fun exploring all these different specialties. Um, in medical school, you can all of the different specialties out and you really find out uh, what you like and what you don't like and it's a really fun uh, experience to go through. Uh, Amanda wants to know if you complete an internship before entering residency. Um, so technically um, your first year of uh, residency is your internship. So it's just it's still all residency, it's just what they call it is very technical. Um, so it's just a matter of words. So, you know, no, you don't have to enter um, an internship before entering residency. Um, sometimes uh, if you graduate medical school or if you are graduating and you still have no idea what kind of doctor you want to be, you can do what's called a traditional rotating internship. And it takes you through all of the specialties again. Uh, you get paid, um, but it gives you the time to really see what you want to do. Um, and how, one person had a question on how important uh, is where you attend uh, undergrad, um, college, and, and university. Um, I would say it's a, so it, it is important, um, but it is more important than the name of your uh, university. It's more important on how you do in your university. Um, but you know, do your research when you're looking at a college. You know, see, you know. I think the most important thing is, do they have a pre-medical program? Um, is, it, is it a good pre-medical program? Uh, medical schools just want to see that you're a well-rounded individual that can do well. So while um, it is important to, to try to go to a good college, if you, if you don't go to an amazing college, it's not the end of the world. If you go to a community college, it's not the end of the world. Just, you just need to show them that you, you can do well in these courses. Um, so what happens after you're done with residency? Well, you're, you're a, excuse me, I'll take a sip of water. You're a practicing doctor. You see, you see patients, you're all done. You can go off, the world is your oyster. Um, you can go join a pediatrics uh, practice and be a doctor that way. You could stay and work in the hospital. Um, you can do whatever you want. Uh, it's, it's, you're done. The journey is finally over. <laughs> Unless you want to go to Oh, wait, I can add another level of complication, unless you want to go to a fellowship. So, for example, um, I know I want to go into pediatrics, but what if I want to go into critical care pediatrics? Well, then you have to do a pediatric critical care subspecialty. So that's another three years. So uh, medical school just makes it so you never end. You're always going to be in school. Um, but after a fellowship, 
is then actually done. But not every resident has to go into a fellowship. Um, so it's a very long, long process. Okay, so um, we have five minutes left in the presentation. Um, does anyone ha else have any um, questions? Uh, this is my this is my last call for questions um, before we go ahead and end the broadcast. And um, I really appreciate everyone uh, in in your thoughtful questions so far. I know that. Um, thinking about being a pre-medical student, um, and a medical student is very stressful, and I would really um, heavily suggest um, checking out the American Medical Student Association. Um, when I had all of these questions, when I was in your position right now, um, this organization really, really helped me um, succeed in my undergraduate education, and it really helped me um, succeed in my medical school education. I really think it was worth joining. Um, we're actually um, excited. We're doing a pre-medical um, fest uh, down at the University of G Gaines, uh, excuse me, University of Florida this year in Gainesville, um, focused specifically for pre-medical students on what it takes to succeed in medical school. Um, and I'll be there, and we're really excited to, to host this pre-medical uh, fest uh, at the end of the year. So um, if anyone has any questions, please go to the website. Um, you can contact any one of us. We're very help, happy to try and help you as much as we can. Um, and we really want to all see you succeed uh, in your pre-medical coursework. So again, I'm very, very happy that um, I could help. And I wish you all luck on this journey. It's not easy, but please, um, if you want to be a doctor, you just you know, it sounds corny, but you really have to believe in yourself and really believe um, that you can succeed because you can, just be prepared to work for it. Um, so with that, I'll go ahead and leave you, and um, I'm, I'm really happy that this could help, and um, again, good luck. I hope to see you with an AMSA. So thanks so much, everyone.